गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो दैट द वर्ल्ड इज सीरियसली फेसिंग द आउट ब्रेक ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड यू आर नॉट एबल टू कम टू स्कूल सो इन दिस रिगार्ड वी आर हियर ऑन दिस डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म एंड आई मिस्टर प्रीतम वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म सो यू हैव रिसेंटली पास द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ क्लास सेवन and you are in class 8 as earlier in class 7 you were having the subject sst that was divided into three section the first one was history the second one was the political and social life which you were were also knowing by the name civics and the third part was geography so here in this video session i am going to start the very first chapter of sst and the subject which i have taken under this sst is history the very first chapter of history when where and how let us see in class 6 you have studied the history of and <coughs> you have studied the history of ancient india whereas in class 7 you have studied the history of uh, medieval india but here in class 8 you are going to have a concept of modern india the history of modern india see the time frame of uh, history it changes in different part of the world talking about the division of history we can call the subject history it has been divided into three major parts the first one is the ancient history the second one is the medieval history and the third one is the modern history and let us know what are the time frame in the different parts of the world so here you can see in europe the medieval history starts from 6th century and ends in 15th century but in india the medieval history it begins from 8th century ad and it ends in 18th century during this medieval history during this period of medieval history the civilization was not so far advanced as we are seeing the civilization of the contemporary world in the modern period there was remarkable change in political social economic and cultural life now clearly talking about this modern period the modern period of history in india it is starts from the second half of the 18th century and it continues till after the independence that means till the day and during the modern period the society of india as well as the world it witnessed remarkable changes in its political social economic and cultural life before to this period as you know that the science and technology was not so far advanced the means of communication the means of transportation there was no any concept of globalization the human beings they were living the very simple and unskilled life the life their life was far away from the touch of science and technology but during this modern period the society of the world as well as india it uh, witnessed a lot of changes a great deal of changes in its political social economical and uh, cultural life now this is the first topic we have to come across we have to know so i must recapitulate once again 
that in class 8 we are going to study the history of modern period and the history of modern period it begins from 1750 AD onwards and it continues till the day means up to now and it covers a time period of near about 260 years when you will add the number of years from 1750 onwards till the day it may come up to 260 years so we shall be studying in class 8 the complete history that begins from 1750 till the period of 1947 that means till the independence and later on in the next classes we will go ahead to this now let us see the next slide what it is about now see the second term that comes in your book is the colonization what we will spell colonization colonization what is this colonization see Colonization is the process. Colonization, it refers to the process in which a powerful country controls other country politically and economically. Let us understand once again. Colonization, it refers to the process. It shows the process in which a powerful country controls the other country which are weaker, which are weaker in its uh, different aspect and they are being controlled politically and economically. As you know that our country after the death of Aurangzeb, the political condition of the country was totally unstable. There was no any strong ruler who can have a strong hold over the political social life of India. And during this period, Britishers, they have come to our country with the initial and the foremost purpose of trading. But when they found that there is complete instability in the country, they started to take stronghold, they started to trick the country, they started to cheat the men of our country and slowly and gradually they started to spread their legs in the social and economical scenario of our country. So, gradually they established stronghold over the flourishing centers in those times. India was a very rich country. It was known as the country of golden birds as we do have spices as we have tea are huge resources of gold so our country was known as the country of golden birds so after the battle of Palasi that took place in 1757 and later the, later the battle of Baksar in 1764 now the Indian rulers were defeated by the Britishers and now they started to show the monopoly not only over the trade but also over the political condition of India. India became a British colony in 18th century. As you know that Britishers they have made many country as their colony. Colony here means to say that the Britishers were coming with the purpose of uh, spreading this uh, Christian religion but uh, slowly and slowly they started to show the monopoly in the political scenario in the political setup of the country now let us turn let us move to the next slide now see the next topic is James Mill a very great personality a person of renowned fame James Mill, you can see here James Mill, the introduction of this person you can find here in the slide as British historian. British historian, once again I will tell you British means a person who belongs to England, a person whose native place is England. So let us know about James Mill in details. 
In 19th century, this British historian James Mill he wrote a book, A History of British India. He was a Scottish economist and political philosopher too. What is this term Scottish? Let us try to understand. A person who belongs to Scotland. A person who belongs to Scotland, Scotland may be termed as Scottish. Suppose take the example of Indians. If we are called India, Indians, that means we are the native person of the country India. And he was a philosopher too. Philosopher, a man of good ideals, a man of morals. Philosopher, he used to give different type of philosophy that are based on different arguments and prove to be beneficial for the country and the society. So, this person, James Mill, he divided the history of India in ancient, medieval and modern. The three part of this division of the history were ancient, medieval and the modern, but his division, his division was having a serious drawbacks. What was that serious drawback? His division was based on the religion of the rulers. Totally, the division he used to divide the history was based on the religion of the rulers. Now suppose take the, take the cases. India has been ruled from its very first day by the different rulers who used to be from the different religions like Hindu, Muslim and later on when the British came they started to rule. That means his division was based on the religion. Here means to say he divided the history of India on the basis of the religion of the rulers who were belonging to Hindu, Muslim and the British community. Now see, he also called Asia as the lower level of civilization. He used to term the Asian societies as the lower level of civilization. Lower level of civilization here means to say that the people of the Asian civilization, they were very far away from the touch of science and technology. They were not so, so socialized. They don't used to live in the society with good norms with the treaty, with the good social touch of with the community. Now see, he also condemned the caste taboos. What is this caste taboos? Let us understand. Different caste, different community of the people, they are having different type of superstitious beliefs. These superstitious beliefs, they are not based on any type of scientific basis. They are not having any scientific basis. And what is this religious intolerance? Religious intolerance here means to say when a king used to belong from a particular religion, he used to be tolerant toward that particular religion, but he was very unkind and un very unkind towards the other religion. Superstitious practices were also carried out in different parts of the country and the world. Superstitious practices, it hampered the progress of the civilization. It does not allow the country to proceed in its advancement with a rapid speed. So, once again, I will sum up this slide. Here in the slide, we are here with a personality named James Mill and have a short introduction of this James Mill. He was a British historian. In the 19th century, he wrote a book, A History of British India. You can also remember that checked year in which he has written this book, A History of British India. The year was 1817. He was a Scottish economist. A Scottish economist here means economist of the country Scotland and political philosophers. Philosopher here means to say a man of uh, morals and ideas. He divided the history of India in ancient, medieval and modern part. Uh, modern part. And his division was based on religion of the rulers. 
he called the eastern societies as the lower level of civilization and he also used to contemplate the indian society as he saw that the indian society was full of caste taboos religious intolerance and superstitious practices so let us move to the, our next slide See, now in this slide we are going to discuss about the sources of modern history. As you know that history can be written on the basis of sources. First of all, understand the meaning of this word source. What is the source? Source here means to say the facts, the data, the clues, the hints which are gathered and on the basis of which the historian writes history is known as sources. So there are different sources of modern history. If we talk the different sources of history one by one, we can see the main records are office, the main sources are official records, sur surveys, and literary sources. That means to say that uh, we can divide the sources of modern history into three parts. The first one is the official record, the second one is the survey and the third one is the literary sources. Now let us note one by one. The first one is the official records. See, the British, they have tried their level best to maintain the record of every document in a far better and advanced way. They have taken the use of calligraphist. What is this calligraphist? Calligraphist is a person who used to write in a beautiful handwriting. Sometimes you may have been facing calligraphy competition in your school. So calligraphist here means a person who used to have a beautiful handwriting and British with the help of calligraphist, they got the records in the written form. British also preserved the official documents in museum and archives. Now, what is the meaning of preserve? Preserve means to save in order that they may not get destroyed with the time. So, British, in order to preserve the official documents, they have made a large number of museums and archives in the country. You can find one of the archives that was established by the British in the year 1920 and one of the finest example of museum is the Victoria <coughs> Museum. Now the second source of the history was the survey. British conducted different type of surveys. Survey means to collect the data, to collect the uh, figures, to collect the data and the figure on the basis of written records. So, the Britishers, they have uh, done a large number of surveys. Some of the example of surveys, the Geological Archaeological Forest Survey. What is this Geological Survey? Geological Survey means to say that they used to count the number of uh, animals and the birds. Animals, sorry, birds not. Archaeological, the number of uh, museums, the number of monuments, they used to have their records, the Forest Survey. And from the end of 19th century, from the end of 19th century, census were also held at an interval of 10 years. Now try to understand what is this census. Census is the counting of the population. And census it occurs, it is held at an interval of 10 years. And apart from this official records and survey, there are a large number of literary, literary sources that gives the detailed information of the modern history in India. Some of the literary sources you can see in the written form. As you know that in the 18th century, there was a development of printing press also. The writing technology, the publishing of the books, 
it was also met by possible by setting different setups in the country so the people they used to write they used to show anger frustration joy sorrow etc in the written form they used to show their anger joy frustration in the written form and one that is stands very outstanding among such person is ras sundari dasi ras sundari dasi she was a very first bengali woman to write an autobiography what is an autobiography autobiography means to write the events of one's life by oneself so she has written a book named amar jeevan in bengali in 1876 so student i hope that this video session is useful for you for better understanding of the chapter visit the chat visit the chapters that is given in the book and here the chapter the complete chapter is it and its main ideas has been discussed with you all so let us see the exercises for you all at the end of this chapter i have prepared some question answer section try to discuss this try to write the answer and submit it in the given a time schedule so let us discuss the question one by one here i have given you five question and you have to write the answer the very first question is what is colonialism colonialism in this section in this question you have to write what is the meaning of the term colonialism the second one is the mention the period of medieval period in india you have to exactly mention from which century it is starts the third one is who was james mill you have to discuss about james mill and on what basis of division of history of india what was his basis of division of history the third one is write a short note on colonization of india means in this question you have to discuss how the british sir with what purpose they have come to india and afterwards how they started to show their monopoly over trade and the political and economical scenario of the country the next one is what are the sources of history of modern india and there are three true and false i hope that you will complete and submit it at the prescribed time schedule thank you wish you all the best